Uh, let me introduce my guest that is here with me in uh, Abuja studio. He's a tech uh, technology entrepreneur. Uh, he was in the APC, but he, is, he since left the APC and moved to the YPP in search of a presidential ticket because of what has been described as the exorbitant rate of or amount of uh, obtaining nomination and uh, uh, show of interest form in the APC. I'm being joined. Uh, a former hope for presidential hope for the APC who since joined the YPP, Mr. Adam Garaba. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Mr. Shum. So you dumped your party APC? Yes, I have to leave the APC because APC have become a, a kind of a party that is displaying so much into anti-democratic tenets and over time now it has become a financializing asset for the entire political environment that we are heading to. And this is a third world country. So a situation whereby you financialize political participation in a third world country, you are causing so much damage to the future of the country. Worst case, in Nigeria's situation, the sources of our money is coming from the ground. It's from material, not human brains. So a situation whereby you financialize everything, you financialize healthcare, you financialize education, you financialize even road transportation. I saw the minister is talking about air patrol on the highway, and now you financialize the political office that is supposed to deliver the public good, it means that we are heading to a situation whereby the life has no incentive to survive and is very dangerous to our system. And that is why I said, APC, since it's taking us to that direction, we have to define a new path, a pathway forward that will remove Nigeria from poverty and transit it to be one of the greatest countries in the world, away from the crass nepotism and the crass cronyism that is evidently happening in APC over time that I have been there. But did you see this when you were there? I was there. I've seen it. Oh, you, only, I, I, you I, were there and you, you saw it. I saw it. But you, you never it. spoke out about it. I did. In fact, I'm one of the most critical person internal it's inside APC. If you check all my... Oh, books. no, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Some of yes, I did. I heard you say it. But it does look like you have moved to the other side now and you saw the light. Yes, not like that. I have been inside APC. I'm those kind of personalities that usually believes and hope in when people promises to deliver something, I give them all the benefit of doubt. And that's why I was an ardent defender and supporter of the APC in the hope that we will see the light. So over time, activities keep coming. After the 2019 election, so many promises were made. Nothing is fulfilled. And again, when we come to the primary election where we are thinking, uh, sorry, in the convention ground, we were thinking there could be some level of soft landing for the young people to participate in the process of running the party affairs, we were set, sent out. And when we come to the secondary or primary election, suddenly we now have a very high amount of money to the point whereby if you are a young man in Nigeria and you try to participate in any political activities in the APC, it is very clear that uh, you are just trying to, uh, to waste your time. Because over time, we are just packed, mushroom, those beans. Maybe they will want to put fire on us and burn us. So this is not the kind of party we should stay in. And that is why I believe the future of young people is outside the APC. And the best solution for me to do is to go to a platform that will give us a better way forward, a better program, a better democracy to be able to advance the course of new generation of Nigerians. And that's why we move to YPP. Hmm. Interesting. So now, uh, you're one of those who was, I mean, said that um, you were very happy when the floor was open. But you, you became dismayed when the, the price of uh, the nomination form came. But you, you went out to, to start a uh, donation uh, plea. How much did you get? I got 83 million. And what happened was, um, immediately I complained about the exorbitant fee. And the party responded, you know, through the interview by the party chairman, who said that it's an effort to separate the serious contenders from the unserious ones. I said, okay, maybe I'm the only one complaining. Why can't I release this information so that every other person can also participate? I decided to throw out account number for the campaign online. I then called my friends and family and associates to sit down, let's organize ourselves and see if we can be able to do that. Maybe I'm the only one complaining. And eventually, after doing that, we were able to realize 1.4 million naira online and about 2 million naira between my friends and associates. And suddenly, we now have this page 18 that came out requesting for signing of your post dating your withdrawal before you participate into the primary election. And I called them for a meeting, especially my friends and associates. We sat down in the given area and then have a conversation. 
And predominantly, we voted between ourselves, should we go to continue in the APC because my own is 65 million? Or should we just stop the contest altogether? Or should we move to another party? There are little contending voices. Then we now say, okay, let's throw it to the vote. 20 of us, 17, voted for us to move to another party. And we decided to move to another party. Those among us that said since they are core APC members, they wanted their monies to be refunded them back. Those that donated online that said they wanted some of their monies to be refunded, we published the account record and asked them to send the request, and they did, and we refunded them back. How much, so have, like, how much have you refunded now? Yes, yeah, so far, I think we were able to refund online. I don't know the amount, but I know that we refunded 24 people. I'm not the one in charge of that area. But uh, within the friends and associates, we refunded about, I think, 18 million or so. So how much do you have left now? Yeah, we still have some money. So you, how, how much did you purchase the firm from the YPP? YPP is 7.5 million. So you still have a lot of money left. It's not a lot when you talk about politics in Nigeria where our senior citizens are supposed to make it easier for people to play. They have financialized it. 100 million for just a firm. So you can imagine how much are you going to spend a situation whereby I'm supposed to tour this country. We just finished even having a meeting organizing a program for me to tour around the six geopolitical zone to meet our party members. And there are so many people that are buying forms um, to try to aspire under our platforms by me joining the party. So I'm supposed to go and see them, give them moral votes and support them. It's a huge Herculean tax that we will not give up as young people of Nigeria because we don't believe this is the kind of country we should, we should inherit. This is a country that has become so much confused. I heard that you are asking about the security problem. Governor Nasir Orofa is just talking about uh, the infiltration of Boko Haram in the center. A reflection of a collective failure of leadership. If Boko Haram can be in the periphery in, uh, at, at, at uh, Sambisa Forest and now they are at the center of Nigeria, stopping the entire activities, you don't have a single security solution approach to fixing this problem in the 21st century we are still approaching these issues using hard power as opposed to soft power where all security issues are addressed using consultative approach by mainstreaming the key stakeholders in all the areas in a council to have a proper deliberation and discussion about how to handle security issues in the country we are still discussing about procurement of military hardware and keep shooting how are we going to solve this problem so, uh, before I go into some of the ideas that you have, so I wanted to, because of accountability's sake, mm. uh, you said uh, you purchased the form in YPP for... 7.5 7 million. 7.5 million. Yes, because uh, the form is supposed to be 15 million. Yeah. I'm under 40, so I'm entitled to 50% discount. Would you have been able to afford 100 million if you wanted to push for the, Did you have the money? Sincerely, I think if we push for we'll get it. Because, you know, out, no, of, no, this, I'm not out of this... You, I'm not saying we, I mean... I mean your, you and your friend. I'm saying, uh, did you have me personally? Do you have 100 million? Me personally? Yeah. I will not. I, 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 a businessman carry 100 million naira to buy from you. Take me as a thief. I don't have 100 million naira to buy a from just to participate in the election process. It doesn't make sense. For I you to buy a from for at 100 all. million. It doesn't make sense. So maybe the party was right when they said they wanted to receive the, the serious, the, the pretenders from the contenders. No, let me explain to you this. Right? So the, I mean, the, party, the party statement even responded by talking about motor park. And there is no better motor park in the world than a place where only money defines who should be where. Because the party decided to put only money as opposed to competency, capacity, you know, programs of delivery, sellability of the candidate, all those things are jettisoned out. They only put only money. And the only place I know where only money can work is either in the brothel, where you pay before service, or motor park, where you pay before you draft. So the best solution is that the party have succeeded in making themselves a motor park. And that's very wrong. That is not a model that young people should see. Because they have discouraged millions and millions of young people in this country. And they have pushed so many of them into crime and criminality because they believe what matters in this country is only money. When you, so and you say that the, the, the APC is not for the young people? It's not, it's, that's why we call it Old Progressive Congress. It's no longer All Progressive Congress. It's an Old or LD Progressive Congress. Because it's a Congress or a congregation of few people that have just paid serious attention to money as opposed to every other thing. A situation whereby you have high rate of crime, you have high rate of drug trafficking, you have high rate of killings, you have high rate of destruction, where we are trying to convince the young people to follow legitimate paths to be able to survive. In APC, we are now using money as a principal driver for you to acquire political office. The office have a leaf on top of it for sale. And this is very risky for our democracy. I mean, because uh, it's a political association. 
where people come together in agreement of, of the common tent of the party. If it was unanimous for the party to stick with the amount they wanted to sell, I mean, it, it, it's an association by, by interest and by, uh, by, by whatever you believe in. No. Now, the question is that the party says they've given reasons for putting the price uh, tag on the nomination form. And they said, look, there's a lot to do. They are the ruling party. So you don't agree with the reasons of the party. The whole essence of democracy is to have average citizens at minimum wage to have right to vote and be voted for. 100 million Naira price nomination form excluded 99.9% .9 of Nigerians from participating in the process. That itself defeated the whole purpose mm. of democracy. A situation whereby your minimum wage is 18,000 Naira. And when BBC did some statistics, it came out very clear that as a director with 350,000 Naira salary, you must save for 24 years before you can afford 500 million Naira. I had a course to look at a statistic, statistical report from Africa today. They have looked at the financialization of Nigerian electionary. A simple candidate, before you win in APC, by APC model, by APC standard, you must budget at least $2 billion dollars to be able to spend between the time that the electionary starts to the time the electionary ends. In but fact, is it the fault of the APC or the fault of the, poli of the political uh, I election system? I think APC is supposed to show leadership by You know example. the reason why I'm saying that? I'm coming. I think Just a moment. Mm -hmm. You don't think that is a system problem, systemic problem? Because if you're running for office in mm -hmm. Nigeria, we have about 8,000 plus um, polling units in this country. Mm. You will have agents in almost all the 8,000 or so uh, polling units that we have across this country. Mm. It, I mean, if you're spending, you wouldn't spend anything less than uh, 2,000 or 3,000 for every uh, agent that you put in the polling unit times 8,000. You need a lot of money to, to prosecute election in this country. Is it a system problem or a particular problem to the party? The whole reason why we did everything possible to bring back APC in government, and some of us even donated to the government to come on board as at 2015, was to bring about a complete holistic systematic change. Failure to do so is why people like us are aspiring with a program and a systematic approach to the, to the ch changes that was going to bring about the systematic approach to everything. We are looking at the whole system and try to re-engineer it so that we can go away from that kind of confusion to a more united, frontally organized country that is driven by economics integration as opposed to the politics of polarization that we have in this country. We come up with a robust program, 17 years of research, 146 countries study to come up with a program and plan that once you integrate into Nigeria, we are going to remove ourselves from all those kind of confusion that, has trying, that is threatening to kill us, threatening to destroy us, threatening to show us that the kidnapping is more better than going to work in a formal environment. So we have to remove it completely and replace it with a new system. Right. And that's even the basis for which Personally, I'm aspiring for... We're due for a break. Uh, and the question that I was going to pose to mm -hmm. Governor Umai is, today, Nigeria is looking for that person that will have the solution to security problem. Just in about 40 seconds before we go on the break, do you have a solution to security problem? 100%. The solution to security problem in Nigeria is creating a council. We call it Council for Security and Political Affairs. Our research has shown that 99% of the security issues we have is driven by political interests. So the best way is to bring in the political and the security interests in one room and then mainstream 350 traditional rulers into that same room representing each ethnic group to be able to discuss these security issues and identify the issues at their micro level to fix them based on the issues identified in those particular areas. That's the way it has been handled. We are not the only ones that are facing this kind of security problem. Many countries have done that before. China have done that before. Russia have got the same problem. Philippines have got the same problem. Saudi Arabia had the same problem. What you do is to mainstream interest group in the country in one room. That you can be able to identify this problem at micro level and tame them before they spread. All right. So, we obviously, I said 8,000, over 8,000 uh, polling units. It's actually over 8,800 watts in Nigeria and uh, over 170,000 polling units in Nigeria. Now, does your party, the YPP, have that structure? Yes, we have structure across the 37, um, 36 states, including the a, um, uh, FCT, which is Abuja. So I'm going to tour the all geopolitical zones, uh, the six geopolitical zones. And with that, we are going to consult with the members of the party. 
and don't forget this is a new generational movement. Uh, we are gr highly decentralized in our approach to everything. Um, we are always horizontal in nature. We leverage on technology to reach out to one another. And incidentally, we are the machines that produce uh, major political leaders that we have today. And this time around, we just decided to say, no, we want to produce ourselves. So it's going to be a very um, interesting uh, game we are playing. I know that it's going to be tough, a game where we want to draw a line between the older generation that have seemingly continuously failed us to a new generation that is going to replace experience with vision for the future of the country, and where we are trying to transform ourselves, because majorly of us, we are members of the screen, we are not members of the book. But you can see in our system, everything still runs through the book, even in our legislation process is the book. When you go to course process is the book. Civil service runs on a book. Banks, many things runs on a book. So and our population are grossly also shut out of that system simply because we believe in the screen of the book. So we are bringing a new order that is going to reconstruct and engineer the social order. What kind, of social president, what kind of president do you hope to be? Should you be given a chance? I will be a president that will put Nigeria on the path to growth and prosperity and make it one of the greatest nations in the world. We have these programs. In fact, our program is clearly mapped out a 16-year program All that right. will ensure that each Nigerian at least live below above $10 a day. Apologies, Mr. Garba. Sorry, you have an advantage of being physically present here with me. Let me get back to Governor Devo Mahi, uh, who for some reason, technically, we are unable to get him earlier. But now I understand that he's back.